fine, man. Don't worry about it. Do, 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 do. I don't know where the buttons are. You're listening to Nearly Informed. What's up? My name is Brad. Brian is here as well. Holler at me, y'all, at Mood Points. On Look Twitter. at us doing this show every day. I know, man. It's been kind of refreshing and nice. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny. I have all these things to talk about, and then I forget them. Yeah, no, that's how it happens. Um, well, today, what are we talking about? You're going to have Alex um, in here in a little DJ bit. DJ Alex D's coming in in a little bit. Uh, or, I mean, I already talked to her. Let's just be honest. Okay, I talked to her before yeah. we started the show because... Brad has been back for two days, three days. No, she, your family's been back for three days. Yes. Already in the ER once. Yep. That sounds about right. Um, it's right on par with, <laughs> it's just, just, you know what? The family's going to come back and we're going to throw it all on the table. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a second to open the show. But Alex, DJ Alex D comes in and she talks with me about uh, Colin Kaepernick's uh, Know Your Rights campaign, which she works with. And it's kind of it kind of blown up today because uh, Travis Scott, rapper who's uh, now going to perform at the Super Bowl halftime show with Maroon Five, Adam Levine in the Maroon Four, I should say. Um, <laughs> um, uh, they don't care; they get a paycheck. There was a uh, there was a uh, a story that leaked through Variety saying that Colin Kaepernick had said, "Like all good, man. We're good. Me and Travis, we had a conversation. We're all good." And uh, his uh, Kaepernick's girlfriend, Nessa. And all Kaepernick's friends were like, hell no, that didn't happen. And in tip- typical Colin Kaepernick style, he didn't actually make a statement about it. He just retweeted everybody. <laughs> that's funny. Which is like, I'm yeah, endorsing this, or am I? Yeah. Um, the funny thing about Colin Kaepernick is, did you know he has not done one interview since uh, uh, this whole kneeling thing started? No, he has I not done one that. interview publicly. He started a uh, charity, Know Your Rights, and they tour and they talk with kids about your rights. But he has played the game of, I'm not going to give you bulletin board misquotes. And, yeah. and it's crazy because he's still the focal point of all these things. Everyone else says stuff around him, but he has not gone on the record saying anything. Like He could come out and say, we're all assuming because of his charity and what he said before he kind of did a media blackout on himself. Um, we could say like this is what his... Um, his his cause is, but he come out and say, "I never said that." <laughs> like, I, that's <laughs> anything, man. I, just, I, I kneel it's, cause it's I, super smart. I mean, he's just trying to just do. I think the thing my vibe with him is he's just trying to do the right thing, whatever that means. I, I think he stumbled into it. Yeah, is what I think. I think he stumbled into it, and he did it in a very clunky way. Yeah, because he did have a lot of insulting um, imaging, and I think that's probably why he's been shy, uh, hesitant to go on the record and say anything other than, you know, his Nike campaign where it said, you know, sometimes you got to believe in something to risk everything yeah. or something that uh, that Nike jumped on board with because, of course, like they're – from a marketing standpoint, yeah. that's going to trend for them. And in, uh, that the, there are a lot of their demographic are people that care deeply about this. Yeah, you got to sell shoes. You know, you got your old men – Throwing their Nikes they mow the lawn in right in the fire. And you know what? Now they're throwing their Gillettes in the fire, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, let's talk raises. about that. Um, let's get into that, too. But, yeah, so your family's back. I, I loved your Instagram post. So when the Nolans get sick, they do it as a team. <laughs> the, teamwork. The, the family who gets sick together stays together. <laughs> it was funny. So this morning, so my daughter's been sick for a couple of days, but it was like kind of light. And then it was like, oh, this is uh, this is going to be a hassle. I will say this. I saw uh, your daughter Declan yesterday when we uh, we did a little web video for the radio station yeah. where we ate Sour Patch Kids cereal, which isn't as bad as I envisioned it being. I envisioned it being just God awful, like yeah, no, Sour Patch I, Kids, uh, the candy in milk, and it really wasn't that bad. And no. I saw her, and she goes, "I go to give her a, a hug, and and she's like, be careful, why I'm sick." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, no, and she, the thing is, she is really good about f- thinking she has energy, and yeah. she doesn't. And so she'll go do things like the video shoot, and she'll she'll be like she, she'll be like, "I'm great, I'm great," and then as soon as we get home, she crashes crashes right completely and so she's been getting sick and then last night i mean she woke up like i don't know 832 times or something like yeah, that Yeah, that sounds about right when you're yeah. sick as a four-year-old yeah and then it was funny because we we're like do you want to get you want your inhaler and you're like no 
stop touching me. Hug me. Stop touching yeah. me. What'd uh, she say about the, you got some gum drop or lollipop? Oh, my God. So, these are terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got her these things because, like, the, the regular kids, got, the cough drops were gone at the store. So I got her these lollipop. I'm like, this is genius. And she's like, it's like, is it menthol? These are terrible. <laughs> like, it was like, she's like, I'll try the cherry one. She tried that. She's like, this is just oh, as God. bad. Declan, you poor thing. <laughs> Cherry's never better. Cherry is always way worse. Cherry, anytime they try to, you know what, cough syrup, just make it taste like the medicine. I don't yeah. need, because when you add the cherry flavoring to it, it just tastes like, it, it, when you burp, it tastes awful. The only flavor I've ever found that makes any sense at all and actually works is grape. Beyond that, it's yeah. like it's just it just tastes like cough medicine. But anyway, so this morning I get up, you know, four o'clock in the morning. I come into work and I do I'm doing my thing, and apparently between the time I left and the time that I got this text message, there were full on bloody noses. There was all kinds of stuff happening, and so uh, Nikki was like, "Okay, I'm going to take her to the ER." You no, know, like, but the bloody noses, that was probably just from, like, what, dried nasal? Yeah, I mean, she has a thing with bloody noses sometimes where it's, like, especially with this kind of, like, Southern California weather, sometimes mm-hmm. it gets to her. And she just spent, what, eight, seven, six, seven weeks up in the Northwest. Exactly. So your, you know, your nasal but then she was having, change. She was having a seemingly hard time breathing, like, but it was, you know, it's like that kind of, like, upper respiratory vibe right. thing happening. And so, so my wife takes her into the ER, and then when she gets to the ER, the ER doctor goes, oh, you're sick, too. How did they know? I mean, she was clear. Nikki's clearly sick as well. Yeah. Okay. And um. And so now she's a patient. And so I'm in the middle of the radio show this morning. I'm like, I gotta go. Yeah. Because I had to watch Declan while Nikki was getting all kinds of scans and stuff done. Well, that's funny. It's like, it's it's funny in kind of a not funny way, but it is kind of funny where you're like, oh, I'm taking my daughter to the ER, mom. Oh, now my mom, now my wife's a patient. Guys, gotta go. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> at first, yeah, at first it was fine. I was like, "Yeah, hey, take my daughter to the ER. No big deal." You know, it'll my be kids fine. go to the ER all the time. Yeah, bumps yeah, and bruises, yeah, but, you know, no bloody nose, whatever. <laughs> and then when she texts me, he's like, "We need somebody to watch Declan while I get scans and stuff." I was like, like, "Isn't that what the nurses yeah, are doing? Come on. Isn't there no. medical <laughs> professionals doing that?" It felt it felt like a dad moment. That I was like, "I'm going to make the right decision and leave my job to go with my family right now." Well, and the thing is, is that I mean, no one's ever going to tell you, "Oh, how dare you, Brad?" <laughs> I know. <laughs> Walk it off. It's funny. I, we were just talking. I don't remember the last time I went to an ER. I think the last time I went to an emergency room for myself was when I almost had a bone sticking out of my wrist because I fell in eighth grade and broke my arm playing basketball and it came off the growth plate and it was like Dang. a big lump. And they had to reset it at the ER. And my dad actually passed out. My dad fainted during that because <laughs> they snapped funny. it back in. I. I didn't feel a thing. I when mean, was it, that? Like, what, you college, high school? I was high school, high eighth school. grade, man. Yeah, yeah. No, middle school. I was the eighth grader. It was like oh, my yeah. last year of, of middle school. I was top dog in middle school. I don't really remember going to the ER for any actual emergencies. I think I've always gone to, like, so in college every year, and I, this is a weird thing, and I don't know if it's because of fibromyalgia or what, but in college every single year, pretty much in the same month, about September, October, I would end up in the ER due to exhaustion, dehydration, and there's all kinds of pain that comes with fibromyalgia that I would just it would overcome me because I went to college in Flagstaff, Arizona, which which when it snows, I mean it's 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 a snowy place. It's an insane it's an insane uh uh temperature swing in yeah, Flagstaff. It is. In it the is. summer times, it's like birds falling out of the tree from heat stroke <laughs> right, dying. Right. And in the wintertime it's snowy. I remember yeah. I did not know it was that cold in Flagstaff. I went there it's to do, in Arizona. Yeah, I went to do a college <laughs> show there. I, I performed. And then the next day I was like, you know what? Bucket list. I'm going to the Grand Canyon, and I'm going to walk, hike down the Grand Canyon. Oh, good luck. So I hi- started hiking down the Grand Canyon. I get up there like 8 in the morning, which, by the way, the woman at the front, uh, at the like the parks area booth yeah. or whatever, you got to drive by, she should have like, red. I was a red flag. I was a driving red flag. I'm driving a, a rented Hyundai Accent, mm-hmm. right? And I'm not dressed for the Grand Canyon. Like, I'm wearing a hooded sweatshirt, and 
I go up and she goes, oh, do you need directions? I go, just tell me which way the nearest canyon part is. <laughs> she really should have been like, oh, um, are sweetie. you feeling okay? <laughs> like, do you need a hug? Do you want to talk to anybody? I basically just seemed like in a Hyundai accent, I was going to solo mission thumb and Louise this bitch. Just like, <laughs> I've had it. I'm done with Arizona. <laughs> show Bye. Me, show me the nearest canyon part. <laughs> this is, I know, it's literally what I said. I just want to see the edge as fast as possible. Yeah. I think I said something to that extent. Yeah. I get to an area where I can hike down, and I start hiking down, and I'm like- <laughs> Which, hold on, stop. If if you've never been to the Grand Canyon, there are really two options. You can go full Grand Canyon, which is a hike, yeah. or you can go, I'm going to go stand on a glass ledge and look down into the Grand Canyon, which is really what you should have done. I did that, and that wasn't enough. Okay. Because I right. looked down, and I was like, I can get to the water from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're it's laughing. It's a day-long hike. It's not. It's two days. <laughs> yeah. I one mean, it's down, a, one back. Yeah, it's a day if you are <laughs> someone who's been training to climb Mount Everest. That's not a day. So, And also, I have no food no water and so i start down this thing and going down i'm like skipping and i'm like trying and you know i'm like and you're traversing this canyon and then i get to the bottom what i think is the bottom that's not the bottom no that's just like one plateau and now i have like a five mile six mile plateau walk and then it's down again and people are like no you really should just do that on a donkey like there's a donkey trail so i get all the way down to the bottom and, I look, and it's freezing now. The sun is gone. It's the winter time. Yep. Sun is gone below the 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 canyon ledge, and I am I am in a long sleeve t shirt because it was hot at the top, and I am sweaty and frozen. And this woman looks at me and she's like, Are, "Do you have any snacks?" <laughs> I was like, "I have nothing." That's and funny. she goes, "Are you on a radio show in Seattle?" And thank God it was a listener. Of the Click 98.9 morning oh my show. Gosh, that and is she funny. she gave me a power bar and a bottle of water. And I still, I dragged myself to the top of it. I was all dirty. And I drove right to the airport and got on a plane. And I smelled like a hot garbage. We're going to talk about being a manly man next. This is Nearly Informed with Brad and Brian. Just thinking about that Grand Canyon thing. I, you know, when I was in college, I was uh, part of the Army as well. And we used to do that every Every year we would go down all the way and back up and do a whole camp exercise. And, you know, it's good training. Yeah, it's steep, man. I'm sure yeah. you're hustling up that thing with. And you're carrying 75 pounds. Yeah, like, yeah. did you guys actually it's bring. Like you are a donkey. Did you guys bring the real. <laughs> you are a pack mule. Did you guys bring the actual gear or did they just throw weights in your bag? No, no, no. For those, we would bring the actual gear. Like, we were staying. Did you have guns night. and stuff? Did you bring guns? So the guns weren't real. So the guns are just like weighted properly and are the same, like dimensions and everything and so but you, they weren't you'd have like you'd have like clips that are weighted the same yeah we, training guns yeah we'd have training weapons but we had all of our gear like clothes and food and all that stuff with us because we were staying the night down there that makes sense because you you can't take a tumble down the you know with an ar-15 strap i mean to your back. i mean you can but a real one and then that thing starts firing off at right. tourists and stuff it's <laughs> yeah it definitely would be an issue. Be, that's gonna be an issue for the military <laughs> So Gillette uh, has come out with a new campaign. I wish we had the audio for it, but we didn't it's, plan that well. It's be the uh, the best men, uh, the best men can be, the be best the, a man can get. Well, that, that's their, their old slogan. The right. best a man can get. <laughs> Gillette. I think that's why people are mad because it went from like '80s like hair metal like Gillette. The best a man can get. And now it's like. Uh, it's like there's flutes playing in the background. Like, <laughs> definitely banjos. <laughs> and it's it's be, uh, Gillette. Be the best men can be. Ah, I see. Or, so, or, the, or the best the best that men can be. It's basically changing it from like, yeah, give it to me. I'm a man. This is the best I can get. To uh, no, be better, guys. You can be better. It's supposed to fight the toxic masculinity. Right, which is what they said. So so here, here's the thing. This ad is basically like you know, do the right thing. Boys will be boy. It goes against the boys will be boys thing. They want to change the definition of boys will be boys to boys will be boys, meaning that they're doing good things. Um, in the in the in the video, um, this guy sees this hot girl walk by, and he's like, "Oh yeah!" And he starts to walk after her, and his friend stops him. He's like, "Not cool, bro. Yeah, no cool. cat call, dog. Yeah." Which I mean, I think like I don't know if any guy is ever gonna. I don't see that ever being a scenario that's real. I would say that it would be a thing where. Guys, just we can come together as a culture and just be like, it's probably not appropriate 
to like holler, nice ass, as a girl walks by. That's right. probably not a strong uh, tactic to get somebody's attention. Here's the thing. I've never done that. I've never cat called a woman in my life. I have confidence issues. That's probably why. You know what's funny? But <laughs> I've just never done it. Yeah, I haven't either. I actually can try to convince my brother. This is really funny. <laughs> last night, uh, I no, night before last, before he, he had chemo on Tuesday. Monday night, we went out and grabbed uh, like some dinner at uh, Stella Barra, this like fancy pizza place. And there was a girl at the bar, and I was like, Pat, you know what, I man? You should go talk to that girl. She keeps looking over here. And he's like, no. And I'm like, Pat, like, why don't you go? He thought I was kidding. I'm like, no, just go, like, say hi. Just introduce yourself. She's talking to a guy that you know, and the guy that you know already waved to you. Like, maybe go talk to She looks like, you know, I think you should go talk to that girl. He goes, you're an idiot. I go, Pat, I'm not saying, like, be a creep. He goes, that's Amber Heard. Oh. And I was like, you mean Johnny Depp's ex-wife? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I go, then you should definitely go talk to her. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you? I, I think she's doing all right. He's like, you're an idiot. I'm like, I didn't know. I don't know who, fa- like, I really can't recognize famous people unless. Yeah. I, I mean. I, I don't know if I would recognize her or not. Amber Heard. Well, she was not trying to recognize you. That's right. the other thing about picking out celebrities in Hollywood. You only recognize the ones who are like, hey, everybody. I'm special. I'm look special. who's here. Yeah. Look who's walking down the street without a hat and sunglasses like on. Like E from Entourage. He does that all the time. What's right. his name? Uh, Kevin Connolly. He's Kevin- always constantly walking around like, look at me, I'm Kevin Connolly. I had that one show. I know. And he also does not have a sense of humor. I think I've talked about this before, yeah. but I put him on That's Instagram. Just st- blasting him for no I reason. I put him on Instagram <laughs> stories, and I was like, wish I wish it was Turtle. And then he put me on Instagram stories, and then I put him on Instagram stories, putting me on Instagram stories. <laughs> I was creating this kind of cool thing, and then he just wouldn't play along. Also, tag me in the post, dog. Yeah. I mean, Get clearly. more followers. <laughs> So what do you think about the concept of toxic masculinity? Because I think that a lot of people, uh, men, are overreacting because their knee jerk at this me at a lot of Me Too stuff is to be like, "That's all. That's not me. Uh, what are you trying to strip away being a man?" And it's like, no. I think the focal point on eliminating toxic masculinity is teaching young, you know, boys and young men. That being a man isn't me isn't me uh, doesn't mean dominating and kind of having this like like I don't apologize for nothing attitude like you're some sort of lumberjack. Yeah. See. See. Okay. So when I watched the video, it did not upset me. Okay. And because I'm not, I don't think I'm toxically masculine. Masculine. That being said, I mean, Brad, you used I to wear you paint your nails and wear eyeliner. That's true. That's very, uh, you're definitely not toxically masculine. And as you used to say, that's not going to happen in the future. You're, you're so. maybe being victimized by toxic femininity. Where, <laughs> where it's like, well, that's it's leeching gonna, into your life. For your that's what I was going to say. I think, I think the, ad, the, the, the intent of the ad is accumulative impressions, right? If more companies and more people are constantly saying being a good guy is important, right. the more that happens, the better off we are. Like it, com- compassion and empathy and understanding can be – a masculine trait being right. it, like to me, I look at those things like that's a well-rounded human being who's leading by example by just being compassionate. Well, this is weird, but I think back to the military stuff that I've experienced in my life and the meanest dudes who taught you the most lessons were also the guys who wanted to shake your hand and say congratulations first. Mm-hmm. And they were super compassionate and they were super, they, you know, and that's not the case for all people. Uh, obviously, in that situation. But those guys were what I considered real men. Right. The guys who would push you to do, and I don't think it's a male-female thing. I think people who push you to do your best and then shake your hand when you do it, that's just a great trait to have. Or tell you, you know, help you improve. Absolutely. Whether it's constructive criticism or just encouragement. Yeah, and I think that, you know, the the thing about that ad that annoyed me is just... you know, okay, you're just trying to sell razors. I get it. The ad was kind of disjointed, and and I didn't honestly. I don't think it even put across the message that that, that they were well, intending the to. Ad- and I think if you're not an ass of a dude, yeah, you're not going to change because you're you're already good. You're not, and if you are an ass, you're this isn't going to. It doesn't solve anything. Right. She's been like, just going to sell jerk. razors to more guys who have longer beards. I mean, the thing about it is, I think they, so. The commercial itself. If you get it, you get it. If you're offended by it, totally. You you may not get it. But also, they had to take kind of these in your face examples of bullying, catcalling, yeah. the uh, the Me Too movement, women's rights being, um, you know, uh, stepping in when people are being um, hurt. They had to use caricatures of those situations to really drive home the point. Otherwise, we're like, 
we don't really get it. What do you mean best men can be? Or we want men to be the best they can be. I mean, aside from the bullying, though, so bullying is toxic masculinity. I mean, I can be. Cat calling isn't really a masculine thing so much as it's a rape culture thing. Well, I think, but also, I think the masculinity part is, I think we're losing, in my opinion, I think we're losing the focal point. And the masculinity part is, it depends on the root of the bullying and the right. root of the, yeah. the incident. If the root of the incident is like, yeah, I'm a big old tough guy and I got to show that everyone I'm tough by picking on this weaker person. I mean, that is bullying for like masculine, you know, masculine, I guess, traits. But also some people bully because they're being bullied. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I don't know. I guess, I mean, I'm just thinking about it. I, I just don't know if... If I think maybe the reason I'm not toxically masculine or hold so much pride in my manhood is because I was raised by a single mom who was the strongest person I've ever met in my life. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, strength for me comes from a female. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if, like, just I have a different experience. Like, I didn't grow up in a football, you know, like, like that kind of, like, then I was around What are you saying about football, Brad? (laughs) I was around all of those people. I played all those sports, but it wasn't. I don't yeah. know. Just I just I guess I I guess I don't get those guys. Well, so this commercial didn't offend me, but it, I did think Gillette could have done better. I, could have been a better. Be visually. the better Gillette that you can be. <laughs> yeah. be the, well, here's get a part, better production team. The thing about it is, I really think that okay, so we're boiling it down to masculinity. We're boiling right. it down to like these awful male traits, but those are just awful human traits that exactly. that are being um, um, that are being dis, uh, exhibited by men. I really think it's all about um, being just a better, more empathetic human being, whether you're a man or a woman. So I know Piers Morgan came right out and was like, oh, PC, you know, let boys be boys, these PC culture. Now we're going to tell boys they can't be boys because of the PC culture. And I think the thing is, for me, is when when did being offended become such a bad thing? You know, yeah. and when did it become the fault of the person offended? Like, oh, you're too much of a sensitive little pansy ass. Like, when did it become something where I you can't be offended, and if you are, you're a little bitch? What? Versus, like, okay, I mean, I'm a comedian, and I run my mouth for a living, and right. I say a lot of things that sometimes when I I've been offended many times at your show. Sure, I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I think I probably offend more people on the radio because I just it's in the moment, and I'm like, right. oh, you took that, you took that away. I didn't mean it. It's yeah. not your fault. It's I meant to um, deliver this message. You heard it this way. I can see. For example, I said don't put your kids in glasses because they're. It should be illegal because they're too cute. Right. Right. That was because, the full sentence. Yes, because they're too cute, and now I just want to have a bunch of kids and put them in glasses. And then we got a tweet about oh, don't tell parents not to put their kids in glasses. Kids need to wear glasses. They can develop vision problems for life. And I'm like, man, what I said was. They're too cute. I was pro glasses there, all right? <laughs> that I was being ridiculous in the middle of it. That's not like masculinity, but also I'm not going to tell that person. I didn't say like, you PC snowflake little bitch. I said, hey, man, that wasn't what I agree with your points. Kids need to be in glasses. They can set up. But I'm not going to call him a snowflake for being offended. Here's here's my take on this, okay, on the, the being offended thing. Be offended all you want. I choose not to be offended about most things, most because I don't care about. I don't have time things. too. Yeah. Wow, I wish I, I had time, time to be offended by. Yeah, a I wish I had time joke. to sit on Twitter and just lash out. I'm more of a reader of comments than a maker of comments. I think you like to lurk in the but in the, the reads. Thing. Yeah, but here's the thing: if you, Brian, are super offended by something. I'm just going to take note that you get offended super easily, and I'm not going to be your friend anymore. I'm not going to say anything to you. <laughs> I don't have time to try to help you become a better person. I don't, and- I don't need all these layers in my friends. I just just laugh at my jokes and tell me I'm pretty. I actually chose to walk away from a comment today, and I almost commented like four or five times. You do have that fire sometimes. Brian has that fire where he's like, oh, I'm about to reply to this. Yeah, and and, and, and then, I, thankfully, most of the time you decide not to. I didn't but. do it on this one. And I'm going to read you the comment because I'm a Facebook friend of this dude. And he's a comic. And also, I was like, what the hell is the point of this? This guy doesn't know what he's talking about anyway. Um, and uh, the comment is, let me, oh, here we go. All right. Um, it's a comedian that I, and I haven't seen him in a long time. I, but it's also one of those things where it's just such, it's like when you see someone trying to be, profound but the logic is completely off the comparisons are off and it's just you're not making any sense so he he tweeted we commented uh so i guess whenever a female teacher sleeps with a 14 year old boy and everyone cracks jokes it's just toxic femininity right and i was like one the jokes are hacky 
Yeah. The jokes are like, oh, look at, oh, yeah. Wish I had a teacher like that. Give her a raise. <laughs> <laughs> like, just these stupid. Like, I, got, I heard one the other day, and I went after a guy on Twitter who I just can't, I like, I, just the comedy of him I can't stand, Andrew Schultz. And he's just like, he's just aggressive. And he's an aggra- he's a he's a troll on re- for a, like he's a troll because he gets reactions. It's the brain, I met right. this dude years ago, and in conversation, I thought he was great. We worked on MTV's Money from Strangers together. But his stand up is like he's got a character he's doing right? right. But I don't think a lot of people understand that. And his thing was like, yeah, these every single school shooter. Uh, when they show up at school, they said the reason was is that they're not getting laid. And now we're going to get mad at these teachers who are sleeping with kids. It's like maybe some of these teachers should start sleeping with more kids so we can reduce these heroes are out there. you know. And I'm like, oh, this is just an awful joke. Yeah, the through, logic through. just starts it's, bad. One, it's built on a flawed premise. Right. Every single school shooter did not say it's because I'm not getting laid. No. All right, you're an idiot for that one. <laughs> that is just a – and then you built an entire bit on a false premise regardless. So this guy's like toxic femininity, and I wanted to comment to it. I wanted to say the joke's hacky. First, comedically, it's hacky. And legally, it's statutory rape. So I don't know about toxic femininity. I think it's a felony. And I also think it's hacky. So toxic femininity, what are you talking about? Like, like I do feel like sometimes when the when that happens, when the teacher, like it's a, it's usually a hot teacher and, you know, some kid or whatever um, who's like 17. Well, sometimes right? like a 14-year-old who looks like you see him and like, yeah. look like there's a... Yeah, but I uh, like when people make those jo- those comments like, yeah, we should uh, give her a raise or whatever. We, like, I almost always want to be like, yay, rape. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just for, yeah, he's so, yeah. so cool. Like, yeah. rape is not a toxic masculinity. Rape is rape. Toxic yeah. masculinity is the idea of like, over of of teaching your boys that it's 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 some pansy ass behavior to to have feelings and to right. care about oh whether or not I have real men don't I, cry yeah what are you doing you little bitch yeah. you know how you hit on a girl you go up and tell her that ass looks dope in those jeans nice boots wanna f- <laughs> <laughs> let's do it those boots will look better on my floor <laughs> up next DJ Alex D talks with Brian uh, about the Colin Kaepernick stuff uh, as it relates to the Super Bowl uh, and and all that and I was not in the room for that because I was handling fam because I'm a real man real man talks of masculinity going to with your family to the ER you're listening to Nearly Informed what's happening everybody Nearly informed. I am Brian Moot. Brad Nolan will be in at some point in time in the show. His family comes back from out of town, and then they start getting sick. And uh, apparently, I'm being told that takes precedence over other things. So Brad yes. Nolan will be in later. Uh, right now, we have a DJ Alex D. What up? You know Alex D. DJ Alex D is is not new to the show. Um, and this is a great day that I, I was able to pull her in here today because there's yeah. a lot of interesting stuff going on that you have more familiarity with. Than most people. Um, so I'll just give you a little kind of a recap if you haven't been paying attention to the news in the Super Bowl halftime show. Uh, it was announced that Maroon 5 was going to be the halftime uh, entertainment. Mm-hmm. It's basically Adam Levine and the Maroon 4. Yeah, it, that's basically what it is. <laughs> like, no one cares about the other guys. I, don't I even, can even name them. I, they could walk no by idea. me in the station. Yeah. Sometimes that happens, actually. Somebody walks by me in the station, yeah. and, I'd be like, and I'll be like, hey, let's, I just give them a nod because they look like they... Know what they're doing? Yeah, like they, know they where got going. they got fashionable stuff on, and yeah, I'm like, oh god, was that a famous person? Yeah. I'm like, that's probably a DJ from it's Europe. So- yeah, makes sense. Um, <laughs> and there was always this big um, speculation and kind of a backlash before it even got announced about who was going to play the halftime show, right? Because of the NFL, the kneeling, uh, the collusion suit with Eric Reed, who's a safety for the Carolina Panthers, mm-hmm. Colin Kaepernick being ostensibly barred from football. Yeah. For leading the charge on that, the president turning it into a um, a uh, an issue over veterans and supporting America versus athletes trying to say, "Hey, we're tired of people of color being shot mm-hmm. and killed on on camera." Basically, I mean, yeah. it's now in our faces. Where I always find the subject interesting from a standpoint of, did this just start happening, or is this finally in our face? But it's been happening for years. Yeah, it's just it's in our face now. I mean, social media. Anybody, I would. I would 100% argue that if something happens on the street, mm-hmm. the first thing you do is grab your phone. You don't yeah. ask if anybody's okay. No, I mean, that's how we, yeah. we see every video we see, uh, someone like someone filming someone else getting beat up or something and no one yeah. trying. Because it's sick that we've gotten to a point where it's more it's more valuable to trend on Twitter than it is to, to exactly. be a good human being. And I think the other thing, too, is the technology with police officers and 
and uh, you know, uh, body cameras and right. dash cameras is so much more sophisticated. And I think that it's provided a lot of insurance for mm-hmm. good police officers who are doing responding right and it's also right. provided a lot of insight to like hey man that was not the correct reaction you re- you really i mean that was murder yeah we're seeing that a lot and and just to give people a quick background with um with alex dj alex d not only is she killing it in the dj game which <laughs> i want to get to before you leave the studio sure <laughs> i don't want to, but i wanted to get to this first um you work with colin kaepernick's yeah. know your rights Camp, campaign. Yeah. Can you give a little bit of background on that for people who don't know anything about it? Yeah, I mean, Colin obviously started the camp, um, and then my big sister is his girlfriend, Nessa. Nessa. Yeah, so they so they run it. Um, each year we try to do about four or five camps in different cities. Um, we reach out to high schools, uh, organizations, uh, mainly black um, organizations, and we all come in. It's a it's a huge day. It's so much fun, and, and, and we break down your rights. There's 10 mm-hmm. points that he has, and then on top of that, we teach uh, legal advice, uh, health and wellness, finance, just stuff that when you're in school, you're not hearing. Right. How much of it is like, no, it's a know your rights thing, but is there also a level of reality of, hey, know your rights, but also know the reality of of what's going on right yeah. now out there. Oh, yeah, so it's like, course. don't be the first person to be yelling like, I know my rights, man. I yeah. remember like my buddy actually in high school, it was like the first time we ever did like learn about, you know, uh, your rights, your civil rights. Yeah. And it was... I think it was like a cop asked us, like, "Hey, are, are you guys are you guys old enough to be smoking?" And the guy's like, "I know my rights, man. You can't just approach me." And the guy yeah. he ended up like <laughs> getting in way more trouble just by con- like getting popping off at a police officer. Exactly. So you got to. I feel like you got to caveat that with know your rights, but also know the environment and know how to navigate yourself safely because ultimately. The whole point is just to, we just want people to be safe. Yeah. And treated fairly. Yeah. I mean, this this last camp, we were in Miami and we had uh, Trayvon Martin's parents wow. come out. And that, and that, I think it, sh- it, 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 it really struck something with the kids that were in the audience because they were like, whoa, like this, like that's my mom and dad up there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so th- it, it really struck a chord with them. But also, we're not blind to the fact that, of course, you can't just pop off on an officer. Right. Like, if somebody asks you, you have to be calm and collected. Respectful. And even, and yeah. And don't I was, be afraid. You exactly. Know? You can't show fear because, of course, of course, they're they're going to attack you more than they would have. But I, I was even in a situation last week. I was in New York, and um, this person that I was with got pulled over, and she got a DUI. Mm-hmm. And she was being asked all these questions, and I was answering for her i was like actually you can't you can't do that she has the right to refuse this this, this and this right and 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 i i ended up going to the police station with them because she was arrested but it was just like if i didn't know that mm-hmm. oh i would have been sitting there scared i'm like yeah take my id take everything take this yeah search the car whatever but you don't have to do that sure but she actually was she ended up getting arrested oh yeah she she did get arrested so she was she, like she, she 100 failed all right every so test but it's, but it's I'm like i see your example <laughs> yeah <laughs> your example is like i you know know how to navigate yourself in a way where it protects your rights as a person yeah but also respects the investigation that the police are going yeah to exactly right i mean right. you can't you can't just be like a jerk and just be like you know what no mm-hmm. officer like i know you kill people on the side like no, no no you can't do that but like there was a point in time where they wanted to search my bag and I and I asked them. I said, "Well, am I under arrest?" And, yeah. What and they did said, I do? Yeah. And, and they were like, "Well, no." And I was like, "Okay." So I mean, the answer is no. I don't want you to. Actually, back. is an interesting example to bring up somebody who was breaking the law yeah. in that situation in this environment where yes, she was breaking the law, and what happened was she is going to have to you know pay for that situation yeah, she's have you to deal know with it. in terms of the law, but. What happened was the most, the safest, most organized way to go about that mm-hmm. so it doesn't have to become a fracas that trends on video. Exactly. So the reason I really want to talk to you today was because of what's happened with Travis Scott, rapper mm-hmm. who, let's just be honest, like the the drama around the Super Bowl was, is any black artist going to be able to go up there and perform yeah. and not disrespect Colin Kaepernick, the movement of, you know, uh, know your rights and those yeah. things. And, you know, Colin Kaepernick is basically a, a representative of not of being barred from playing football because of his his uh, passion and his advocacy, mm-hmm. which at this point, I think there's so many trash quarterbacks being signed every day. It's, it's ridiculous. It's impossible. Anyone who defends like, hey, man, it's owner's right to have quarterbacks, whatever quarterback they want. Yeah. Totally true. It is the owner's right to, se- to select a quarterback. But it also, at the expense of every single fan you have, when you're signing guys out of retirement 
who are coaching in other – Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Play, like coaching in the CFL, yeah. and you're like, hey, hey, what are you doing, man? Uh, yeah. Hey, Brandon Whedon, are you uh, are you free? It's like yeah. the guy's like, I'm playing golf. Can we talk about this later with my agent? Man, I'm surprised Johnny Manziel hasn't been signed yet. Like that, like that's the lowest. He would have been had he not gone to the CFL and thrown six interceptions you're and right. a half. You're right. If he just sat at home. He would yeah, have been on NFL. Had a better team. shot. Isn't that crazy? Um, so <laughs> Travis Scott, rapper, he's uh, famously known now for being Kylie Jenner's baby daddy. Yep. Also, he's got a great album out right now. He signed on to perform at the halftime show mm-hmm. in Atlanta this year at the yeah. Super Bowl. So now, so did Big Boy from Outkast. Right. Which at first when that happened, I said, hey, man, that's going to provide Travis Scott a little bit of cover in terms of criticism. Because Absolutely Big not. Boy is such an Atlanta OG mm. rapper who's wanted to play the Super Bowl forever. He's talked about how the reason he's never played the Super Bowl is because Andre 3000 is such a creative. And he won't yep. let anybody meddle with what he wants to do. Yep. So they've turned it down a few times. But what's interesting today, and I, I really... It kind of took me by surprise because I, it seemed like people were just kind of going, okay, Travis Scott and Big Boy. And then there was like, you know, petitions to get them, hey, they better kneel, they better make a statement, mm-hmm. which is a lot of pressure to be under when yeah. you're a young rapper who's now like faced with, what am I going to do, man? I got my career and I also got some of my beliefs. But now, today, and it kind of happened during our morning show this morning, was um, it was leaked or said by, so somebody at Variety, it was leaked that supposedly Travis Scott had met with Colin Kaepernick Mm -hmm. and Colin Kaepernick had said, you know, like I respect everybody's right to, I don't think he said like, I support you, but I respect your right to do what you want. Right. And that came out and it kind of got twisted into this thing for by variety of like, Hey, Colin says it's good, man. So everything's fine. Colin says Travis is all right. Yeah. And then, then immediately started getting tweeted by uh, Nessa, mm-hmm. Colin's girlfriend, who also works at Hot 97 yeah. in New York, correct? Yeah, Hot 97, MTV, and NBC. Yeah, she's doing pretty well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's, <laughs> she's, she's doing good. all right. She's and, uh, <laughs> and also um, e- uh, Ebro from the mm-hmm. Hot 97 morning show, basically saying, like, this is not true. Yeah. Colin did it. not sign off on any of this. Yeah. Um, like, so do you have any insight on, I mean, have you? did you hear about that at all? I mean, you would have heard in, like, conversations that Colin – was like, oh yeah, this is my campaign, but like I'm not, I'm just gonna support people who want to perform however they want to perform, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Colin genuinely appreciates, you know, art, mm-hmm. but I don't know. There's there's just really something to be said about this situation, and I right. think that anybody that agrees with the NFL in any way is wrong. Mm-hmm. And I think, and 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 this is just my opinion. But you don't get paid to perform at the at the Super Bowl. No, nah, it's so, all. So yeah, that's when people say like they're, they're getting on. Nope, the NFL picks up production costs. Yeah, and then not. you just it's like a prestigious honor. Like exactly. Hey, but you, I mean, twenty eight million people are gonna be watching one game. Right, and 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 that's cool. But also, like, think back about like Beyonce. Right, Beyonce kind of made a stand, even though it was mm-hmm. it was in her own her own way, and then it was it, it was Bruno Mars and all that. But I just I just have such a hard time believing that Travis Scott is 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 going to make a stand in any way. Obviously, right. Maroon Five is going to stand out of it because half of their fans are Trump supporters, and yeah, then and, the, and, uh, he, and they've yeah. never Adam Levine's never been that that guy. I yeah, mean, the guy that they should have gotten this year would have been Justin Timberlake. Do your one man show, yeah, and just not be controversial. Adam Levine clearly not going to make a, a statement. No. I would say the one thing that I get frustrated by with already being upset with Travis Scott for taking the 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 gig is. Yeah. Well, why don't we wait till he doesn't make a statement? You know, why why don't right. we give him a shot to to use the platform? Maybe he's got a creative idea. Now, I don't know. I would yeah. I would probably err on the side of he probably doesn't. He probably doesn't, and just because but he's part of the Kardashian Jenner machine, well, which yeah. on the other side might be like. Hey. I mean, maybe, but I just, I just can't. Okay, maybe actually, now that you say that, maybe there is a flip side to this because Kim Kardashian is working on prison reform mm-hmm. in her own way. So, so may, may he I'll, I'll give a slight benefit. Of the he doubt. hasn't been the rapper to make social statements yet. Exactly, like, he's not Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar wouldn't be anywhere close to getting a Super Bowl nod simply because they know he does it. In songs every day, he does every time he's on a platform. He makes a statement exactly, about and you know and what? Big Boy has never been statement guy either, unless it's about. Pimps and hoes in Atlanta, and you know Magic City and <laughs> I mean, strip club <laughs> poles. I mean, he, Big Boy's got his lane. But too. you know what? I'm not even mad at Big Boy just because it's such a dream, right? Like it's it's Atlanta. It makes sense. I feel like that's why people are overlooking Big Boy. Like, right. oh yeah, whatever. It's it's Big Boy makes sense. Okay, got it. And Atlanta. he's been in the game for 30 years. Yeah, like what are you gonna tell him at this point? Like, yeah, this is one thing off my bucket list. Like, no, you can't. You know what I mean? Because I've been sense. rich for three decades. All yeah. right, I'm you know yeah. I, not that I don't care. 
But listen, it's I, it's in front of my family. Exactly. But I will say that if you've never been to a Travis Scott show, and I went, uh, have you gone? No, I have not. I love Travis Scott though. He's he's quickly climbing the ranks in terms of I just love his like monotone kind of rap. I can't. I can't. You know, you're not I into can't it. do it. And you know what? I went to the concert with such an open mind because I've never been like I like Travis Scott yeah. for what he's on, but. I can't. I went to that concert and I felt so uncomfortable. And like, if you look at me, like I don't, I don't look black, no. but like, I am. And I felt so uncomfortable. Honestly, I could probably count on my hands how many black people there were at that show. Really, it was all white people, and it reminded me of a rock show. So he's really so his demo was, is really quickly becoming his demo is those hipster white kids that go to Coachella. It's and I'm not that, saying that that's bad. Well, he used to do Warp Tour. As right. like a, a super opening act, you know, the 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 yeah. crowd filler act where you're just, you know, rapping at people as they walk by you. Exactly. Which is an interesting, because he doesn't have the look of like that skate alternative MC. No, but he's, he's not like Lupe a... Fiasco or anything where he's, you know, making songs about skating. Yeah, not at all. He's just, it, it, it really blew my mind so to you, see that show. Do you think that that is an underlying tension with people in the black community who are concerned about this issue because let's be honest there are some that aren't i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of people who are saying yo i'm gonna watch the super bowl no matter what yeah you know and there's a lot of people who are signing those petitions yeah don't perform yet they're gonna watch the game they're gonna be at their parties and then they're gonna say oh i just i watched it for the commercials well you know what you can watch the commercials on youtube so do you think there's an underlying tension because he hasn't been to this point a vocal member of like of you know i know my rights or yeah. any of the causes supporting education and awareness because there are some even NM players that are in the nfl now that yeah. are using that platform for how do we educate and how do we change the culture that yeah and not stop complaining about it, let's change it yeah i i don't i don't know i just kind of feel like travis scott has this huge platform now he has the kardashian jenner money and if he wanted to, he could make a difference. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he wants to, yeah. and that's not and 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 that's not on anybody. Nobody, like, yeah, nobody you, has you know to I, be an advocate. Totally, you know? exactly. But at this in 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 that same breath, I think just in this day and age, like we have people that are starving right now because the government is shut down. Right. And 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 you get this opportunity to just say something and you don't. It's just disappointing is what it is. Yeah, I mean it I doesn't, could, I yeah. could see that especially as someone like yourself who's worked on the I Know My Rights campaign and you see the outreach and you have a personal relationship with Colin Kaepernick and you know you see the the battle that he's fighting. And this is I'm saying this knowing that there are a lot of people who don't agree with anything he did. I Yeah. You know my girlfriend is from the south. I live I lived in the south. I was in the South. Yeah. And I always try to be someone who's like, listen, I'm not going to tell you how to think. If you are angry at Colin Kaepernick and you think that he is, like, you know, I've I've met people, my girlfriend's parents are like, he's yeah. disrespecting the flag, I'll never watch another NFL game again. Okay, that's your right in this country. It would be right. hypocritical of me to sit here and say what I believe in terms of my rights to say what I want on the platforms that I have, right. yet tell you you can't have the same thing. I would yeah. say educate yourself to find out exactly what what people do believe and also understand that we are in a culture now where pol- politicians weaponize things immediately mm-hmm. to try to draw people into camps for votes. Yeah. And ultimately, I don't think a lot of politicians are up there banging the drum the hardest on either side care yeah. that much. They, yeah. they really just see it as like, oh, I have to be on this side of, yeah. of this argument because these are my constituents and my voters and I'm monetizing this because this is my job and I want to keep it. Yeah, and they and they want to grow in their industry, which is fine, but... I just, I mean, you you said it best. You just need to be educated Uh about it. You don't need to pick a side. You don't need to be right or wrong. You just need to educate yourself on both sides. So if I'm coming to you and I say my opinion, but you can't come, you can't come back and be like, well, he's disrespecting the flag. Actually, he's not because a veteran suggested this to him. Yeah, and it has nothing uh, to do. Nate Boyer, he played for the Seahawks. Yeah, I know. I'm familiar with Nate. Yeah, that was his recommendation. Was don't sit through the anthem. Kneel for the anthem. Yeah. And I mean, because also this, the interesting part about the whole anthem thing, I don't want to tangent it too much, but yeah, right. there are some people who get passes and some people who don't. Exactly. And, I, and Marshawn Lynch, I love Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Marshawn Lynch has sat through more national anthems, eating food, hot dog, his feet up on Man. the bench, <laughs> because he just doesn't care. Now, yeah. that, that in that same breath, he also wasn't trying to make it a political statement. And I think right. Colin was, but also... People get mad at, you know, what else, how else are NFL players supposed to protest in a peaceful way? Yeah, well, also, let's look at Tim Tebow, who kneeled to pray 
and now and now and now you're forgetting. Okay, well now you're forcing religion on people. Mm-hmm. So where so where is the line drawn? Religion's okay, but killing black people is not okay. There, you know what? It's that's a very interesting point. I would say that the, in this day and age, the line is specific to the person who's looking for it. It's insane, right? So yeah. it's like that line. You would say that to somebody who's very religious. Say that's clear, man. That line has been set since Jesus was born. Yeah, and that's the line that we've never moved that line. Yeah, and then you other people who aren't religious. I'm not religious. I'm not and religious. And I yeah. say to people, hey, man, in on our morning show. Uh, Edgar, my co-host, wants to pr- wants to pray real quick. Hey, let's have a great show today. And, and I don't I don't get in the way of that. I'm not going to be like, nope, not in my yeah. world. I, I'm not necessarily actively involved. I'm not, but I still don't begrudge anybody what they believe in in yeah. any way, shape, or form. Yeah. All, all right, I'm going to get you out of here because I know you're busy. <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, real quick. T- you're DJing. You're DJing all over the place. Every yeah. time I look at your Instagram <laughs> stories, you're in Miami, different city. <laughs> you're all over the place. I'm and, trying to be. I want to go on tour, man. <laughs> we want to get you to Atlanta. Atlanta for gotta, Pride uh, Weekend go. is one of the funnest places. Every city I've been able to work in in radio, Seattle, Los Angeles, Atlanta, always yeah. have amazing uh, pride celebrations. Yeah. And I think it's a, I, and it, I love living in cities that have an eclectic mindset. I, in the South, I loved it more because of you had some real diversity in yeah. the city of Atlanta. And all of a sudden, racial diversity, ideological, religious diversity. Um, we need to get you to Pride. I'm down. Um, and so check her out. What are on socials? Where are you at? Um, on Twitter and Instagram, it's at DJ Alex D underscore. And that's and that's basically it. So before we get out of here, <laughs> let me get your prediction before we end this segment. Okay. And then and then I bring Brad Nolan in here. I saw him slink by the window. Oh, for sure. Um, uh, <laughs> what is your prediction on how the Travis Scott um, backlash criticism plays out? Do you think he in any way acknowledges it, or do you think he moves forward? And do you think he does anything if he performs to uh, to be an advocate for any cause, or just does his song? Man, honestly, I I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. But I know in my heart that he's just going to go up there and perform and walk right off the stage. And he's 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 not going to care. He's, Do his thing. he's not. He's just not. I mean, if 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 Chris Jenner's behind this, I think he goes up there and and puts on the most political statement ever just so he trends on Twitter. I hope so. Day. This is Nearly Informed with Brad and Brian. Let's be honest, there are tons of ways to send money back home, and every company promises me the same things, good rates and safe transfers. That's why it can be overwhelming to choose a new way to send money. I switched to Remitly because I can track my money every step of the way, which means I know exactly when my mom will get her money. And with their extensive payment network, my mom can receive her money in a way that is more convenient and safe for her. You should check it out. Go to Remitly.com or download their app to get started. Remitly, Inc. is a licensed money transmitter by the state of New York, California, Massachusetts, and other states.